Thank you for joining us today. Won't you join us by liking our Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. We'd appreciate it. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday School lesson. My name is Reverend Theron L. Jones I and I'm an associate minister at the Greater Queens Missionary Baptist Church located in Chicago, Illinois, where our pastor is the Reverend Kevin Wilkes. Let us open with a word of prayer. Father God, teach me your ways that I might be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, and thank God. Again, we thank you for being a part of our Sunday School lesson. And our lesson for today is entitled, Justice, Judges, and Priests. And our background scripture is from Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter, verses 18 to 20. Deuteronomy, the 17th chapter, verses 8 through 13. And Deuteronomy, the 19th chapter, verses 15 through 21. And our quarterly theme is continues to be justice, law, and history. And our unit two for the month of January in this first quarter theme is God, the source of justice. And our main thought of memory for this lesson is Deuteronomy 16 and 18, which reads thusly, Judges and officers shall thou make thee in all thy gate, which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. True justice comes from God and God alone, because if very few men, if any, can give true justice because we still deal with the flesh. We have our own opinions. We have our own thoughts. We out, have our own outlooks. We are influenced by outside influences, etc., etc., etc. In order to be a righteous judge or priest, one must first and foremost believe in God. Two, they must accept God for who he is and be led by the word of God and all that he or she does be according to the word of God. In ancient times, in, the, in these days of the Israelites, Judges ruled over matters to ensure justice was afforded to all people, regardless of their, again, social standing. And officers assisted the judges with leadership and just decisions for all people according to God's will. Verse, chapter 16, verse 18, which is the memory verse. Judges and officers shall thou make thee in all thy gate, which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. Key word. And they, that in other words, they're supposed to be just and fair, as we talked about in last week's lesson about justice and fairness. Judgment cannot, is not to be distorted or twisted in verse, chapter 16, verse 19. Thou shalt not rest judgment, thou shalt not respect persons, neither take a gift, a bribe, nor a gift thou blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. We talked about this bribe thing last week. And Rest has nothing to do with who it is. When you 
twist or distort judgment, respect a person, or take a bribe to affect the outcome of the decision, as was so commonly practiced in ancient times and continues to be practiced in our society today. Complete and absolute judgment for all must be the priority of God's people. Whether we know the person that's been accused or tried or not, because this is God's priority and can only be enacted by following that which God has commanded. Them then and us today. Verse 20, that which is all together just shall thou follow and thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God gives thee. Justice brings about blessings to all involved. Injustice brings about curses and evilness in our lives. If a matter, regardless if it was concerning death to another, this is verse chapter 17, verse eight. If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment between blood and blood, between plead and plea, and between stroke and stroke, then matters of controversy within thy gates, then shall thou arise and get thee up into the place where the Lord thy God shall choose. Death to another, that's blood to blood. Lawsuits, plead to plead. Physical injury, stroke to stroke. Could, if it could not be settled, it was to be taken to God at the place assigned by him. That he had chose for this. A central, it was a central sanctuary where sacrifices, tithes, offerings, and vows were given to God. It was a sacred place. So if in the court or the the local judges and priests couldn't come up with a decision, they took it to God. And oftentimes, what's the, what we say, take it to the Lord in prayer. And the priests and the judges, verse 9, And thou shalt come unto the priests, the Levites, and unto the judges that shall be in thee those days, and inquire, and they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. That's verse 9. And they were to give the final decision, judgment, according to the law of Moses, because it covered all areas, whether sacred or secular, unlike the world's thinking then and now. And most of our laws made by man have nothing to do with the sacred or the spiritual. God commands that their decision is final and must be followed by all that was given in this place chosen by the Lord. A sacred decision made in a sacred place. Verse 10, and thou shalt do according to the sentence which they of that place which the Lord shall choose shall sow thee and thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee. That was it, final decision. And once the decision is given, it must not be deviated from left or right or anything added to or taken from it. Verse 11, according to the sentence of the law, which they shall teach thee and according to the judgment, which they shall tell thee, thou shalt do, thou shalt not decline from the sentence, which they shall show thee to the right hand, nor to the left. Anyone who defiled this judgment from God through his priests and judges, or to be put to death, usually by being stoned. 
to ensure this evil spirit of resistance to the will and the judgment of God did not corrupt the entire community. As I say, one bad apple can spoil a whole barrel of good ones just by putting it on the top. Eventually, that rotten will spread through the whole barrel. And it's the same way with evil. If you let evil go untouched, it will spread whether it's in your household, on your job, in our churches, on your in the neighborhood, wherever. If evil is there and it is not addressed, it will spread and rotten the whole barrel. And we must follow all that God says or does. To live disciplined lives as God calls us to. We don't get to pick or choose which commands and laws of the Bible we follow or don't. It's not a multiple choice test. It's what he says and that's it. There's no going to the left and there's no going to the right. Either you're following it or you're not. There's no in between. And it's all the same for Christians. There's only one set of rules. God's word. <clears throat> Punishment. Even unto death was extracted to show the consequences of disobedience. Otherwise, as in our society, when one gets away with evil, they and others continue their wicked ways. Those who fear or revere God turn from those ways and try to live according to God's will the best that they can. And, and when we think about this lesson, let's look at verse 12. And man that will do presumes presumptuously and will not hearken unto the priest that standing to minister there before the Lord thy God or unto the judge, even that man shall die and thou shalt put away the evil from Israel. One bad apple, gotta go. And, and verse 13, and all the people shall hear and fear and do mo no more presumptuously. Because when you disobey God, there are consequences. Not only for us individually, but those consequences can affect everything else in our lives. And this lesson, as we come to the close of it, there are four types of justice. Distributed, which is to deliver economic fairness given to one and what one is owed. There's restor rest restorative justice, which requires restitution to the offended by the offender. Three, there's retributive justice that the offender receive his or her, his or her just punishment. And four, but not last, there are procedural just there's procedural justice that all laws are applied to all people as given, which leads to the proper administration of the first three justices. So without the procedural justice, there can be no complete distributive, restor restorative, or retributive. Justice, judges, and priests. And again, God is the source of all justice. Our, our unit theme, unit two for January. And we thank you 
for being a part of our Sunday school. And as we study on justice this month, let us think, how just are we, just individually? We're not talking about your, the household. We're not talking about the church. We're not talking about your job. Each one of us individually look in the mirror and ask the question, how just am I? On behalf of Pastor Kevin Wilkes, and the Greater Queens Missionary Baptist Church family. Again, we thank you for being a part of our Sunday School lesson. Let us pray. God bless and God keep us all. Amen. And thank God. Thank you for joining us today. We hope and pray that this Sunday School lesson has made you want to learn just a little bit more about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why don't you join us for our Sunday School at 10 o'clock, morning worship at 1130. We look forward to seeing you there. Until then, tell somebody you love them.